Hello and welcome to my first deck tech for Opus 16. Uh, this time we're going to be talking about the Black Mages, but before we do that, I just kind of wanted to... I wanted to cover my thoughts on how I build my decks now that we have the return of organized play, we'll be seeing some competitive events, and just so people know where I'm coming from when I build my decks, you know, for me, I always want to have fun. I want to have a good time. So most of the decks you see on here, maybe not most, maybe all of them, are all about theming and having fun. You know, I do think some of them are competitive in the sense that this is stuff I think you could take to your locals, you know, go 3-0 with it at one of your locals. I've had that success with any decks I'm going to show on this channel. But this is by no means the top stuff. You know, I can't guarantee what kind of success you will or won't have if you take this to a regional or a nationals or whatever. Because I, while I've tested these enough to be satisfied with them, I've by no means tested them to the point of like, oh, you know, I know how this will do against Sky Pirates or Twins or whatever the top, you know, meta deck is at the time. So just, you know, for me, I, I do very much care about the theme and like sometimes I'll probably put more theme elements in there than maybe you would do if you were trying to make this the best competitive version possible. But anyway, that's where I'm coming from. Let's talk about the Black Mages. I went through this weird thing with Opus 16 where I was kind of excited to try a lot of stuff, but then at the same time, I didn't really know what to build or what to try first. But Black Mages are the things I've probably enjoyed the most, and it's pretty impressive how much they were able to get out of essentially really about two cards, which is this VV and Black Waltz 3. Of course, we've got some supporting cards as well. I'm just going to put them all out now in Black Waltz 2 as well as Black Waltz 1. But I wasn't sure how this would do just because I thought, well, you know, it's a little limited. You know, they've only released basically four new cards for it. Is that going to be enough? But surprisingly, it has been, at least in my testing. So all three of the waltzes have this ability that you can discard a job named Black Waltz for no cost. You know, you pay zero CP, then you discard a job... Black Mage, I said Black Waltz earlier, you just start go to Black Mage, and then you do whatever their effect is. He'll shoot for 5,000, he'll deal a dull forward 7,000, and he'll break a forward of three or less. And then the nice thing is, if any of these cards are discarded, they also do 4,000 damage uh, as part, if they are discarded by an ability. So if you use the ability, so for example, Black Waltz 2, you use his effect, discard Black Waltz 1, you'll hit something for 5,000, then this discarded card hits it for 4. Uh, that removal is very nice, and then on top of that, when Vivi enters the field, he can get back any Black Mage, job Black Mage, other than himself. And so he kind of has a little mini loop here with Black Waltz 3, because when Black Waltz 3 dies, you get to get back two job Black Mages other than himself. So you can get back the Vivi, and then the Vivi gets him back, and then he can get back Vivi, and so on and so on. Vivi also has a great action ability that if you dull him, you choose a forward, you hit it for 8,000 damage. Especially if you have your Black Mage backup that I'm going to show you, then, which I might as well just put it out now, it's Palum. Uh, that means Vivi, just, if he's out there with just Palum, he can hit for anything for 8,000 damage. Add one more of these, suddenly it's 12,000. It's quite potent. It's a pretty nice little set of removal, and it's not really fancy. Uh, so there, it's very versatile, too. I've got another list that leans more into Earth. This one is just Fire Lightning, but I'll go into that one later. Uh, and then I've seen lists that use Water and Lightning with White Mages to kind of use this OTK draw through your deck. Very versatile list. This is my Fire Lightning one, and this is the one I'm going to stay focused on. But now, it's very important to note that these say Job Black Mage, not Card Name Black Mage. Because there's a lot of Black Mage standard units out of there, but none of them work with this deck. So <laughs> don't even bother trying that. But yeah, it, it's funny, now that I'm out here getting ready to talk about it, I'm like, well, they're very straightforward. At least in this deck, you know, this is very straightforward removal. Not a whole lot of tricks you're going to do with them. You're almost always going to be wanting to put down three and two. I don't know if I've... I think I've put down one a single time. It was a very specific situation. They had, like, a unit and an Orin, and the unit was dull. So I used him to hit the unit for 7k and the Orin for 4. Very specific. For the most part, he's just in here to discard for the others. He's the only ice card in here. In testing, I've never gotten color locked with this card. So I like it, but if for some reason... You're finding yourself getting color locked for it. You could bump him and just run with these black mages. Uh, thing to note about Palum: Palum does not have the on discard ability, nor does Vivi. So if you do discard one of these two, remember you're not getting that additional 4K that you might get used to. So just don't kind of trick yourself with that. So since these are kind of the core of the deck, it seemed to make the most sense to me to support them with things that 
allowed you to do it as much as possible to basically have this somewhat unlimited removal. So I'm going to show you some of our pieces for that. One copy of Aldo, because I think it is very important to hit three. I've, had, I've tested this deck quite a bit, and there was one version where my friend hit all three copies of Black Waltz 3 into damage. And that was before I'd put Aldo, and I was like, you know what? No, no, he's too important. Like, I can't have that happen, Aldo. Or if you've already got three, then you can go grab BB, but Aldo's there for that. Crow, I kind of forgot about this backup, but it, it works so well in this deck. It can prevent uh, a lethal turn or set up a lethal turn for you by doing a forward. And then when it goes to the break zone, you can get back any forward. So again, you can, on the stack of something, if they're coming in, dull another forward, get back a Black Waltz, then use that Black Waltz immediately, you know, for one of the other's effects. Same with Zemus. He's going to get you a forward back when he enters the field. Damage 3 is really nice because he'll get you a backup as well, but you're happy to just play him early. Chadley. I like this a lot more than I thought I would, and in particular I like him in this deck because... So he doesn't do anything when he enters, he gets two research counters on the field, but then, at any time after that, you can dull him and remove a research counter, choose a forward in your break zone, put it back in your hand. You can even do this on your opponent's turn. So there's a few times I've had, they're coming in with whatever, I've got two on the field, say, okay, Chadley, pull back, you know, one of the other black mages, immediately discard it for Black Waltz 2's effect. So while at times I was worried Chadley would be a little slow, I really like him here just because, again, anything that lets us keep reusing the Black Waltz is really nice. Three copies of X-Death as well for the exact same reason. If you can use X-Death to bring out... VV is probably the best target, but even Black Waltz 3. So X-Death will break one of their forwards, then you get to pull back VV or Black Waltz 3. If you pull back VV, you can then <laughs> pull back the Black Waltz 3 off of that. That feels great, and then of course his special is excellent as well. Can't go wrong with X-Death. So, this is all of our kind of recursion mechanics. These are the ways we can use to kind of cycle these Black Waltzes over and over again. And I have to say, for Fire Lightning, it feels quite effective. Uh, again, I have an Earth version that I'll show you later. That, of course, it's Earth, so it's got built-in recursion, but this Lightning version has felt quite nice as well. So, now we're going to talk about the cards to supplement the package. Two copies of Null. He and these next three cards, I'm just going to show them to you all together. Two copies of Eldori Emperor and two copies of Gesho. They are legit in here because they are all dual elements of fire and lightning. And so if you draw one of these cards early, it's very nice to have the versatility of, okay, I can pitch null for either of these two elements. Now, their effects are great on their own. If you get to damage five, Eldoray Emperor can be especially potent. Uh, and Gesho, I think, is one of the best cards that's kind of slept on in Fire Lightning just because he's proactive. You know, if you notice a lot of this stuff in this deck, and really this element archetype in general is, it's very reactive. You know, these guys all want to delete something, but they have to wait till your opponent puts a forward down. What if your opponent doesn't put a forward down? Well, that's where Gesho is your best friend, since he can just remove a card out from their hand straight out of the game. And man, pulling an Amatross out of their hand, that is what you want to do, so... I do really value Gesho for that. You could bump him up to three if you wanted. I tried that a few times. I didn't really notice a difference between three and two, but you could absolutely take off one of these or take something else out if you want to get Gesho up to three. Three copies of a card that I always like, but I'm just becoming more and more fond of is Terra, mainly because Amaterasu is that important of a summon. We have another card that has summons as well, which is Seymour. So let me show your summons really quick and I'll talk about all these. Three copies of Brynhildr. Hit something for 5,000, and if it dies this turn, you can draw a card off of it. At first, I thought it would be a really good combo with the waltzes. Like, oh, but it, just depending, it depends on what you're trying to do. But sometimes, like, let's say they've got a two cost. You, you break it out right with the waltz three. You pitch this guy. The other thing hits for 4K. It's like, oh, well, that wasn't enough to finish it off. Brynhildr is a nice little cheap follow-up to that that will replace a card in your hand, help you get to your other waltzes. Three copies, of course, of Amaterasu. If you're running fire, you need to be running the summon. It's that important. And that's legit why Terra is here. Terra won't ping off of any of the waltz effects, but she can ping off the summons. So just being able to recycle Amaterasu is very important. And I don't really value many of the lightning summons, so I just went all in on the fire summons. Three copies of that Bahamut. There are no ways to get crystals in this deck, so you will never pay for that more cheaply. But... Having being able to hit a 9k threat can be very important, especially if there's a lot of stuff this Black Waltz can't hit because, again, he only targets three or less. So if they've got a four or higher and you don't have one of these out that can also deal with it, Bahamut's a nice clean way to be able to deal with early answers. 
going back to the Seymour, when he enters the field, as long as you have three of these summons in the break zone, he's going to break anything you desire. Which, if you're like me, you will always have three plus summons in the break zone by turn two, because you draw your summons early. I, I'm cursed to do that, apparently. But there's, I think there's been one single game where I got to Seymour and I didn't have his ability live yet. But it's nice because you don't spend those summons, he just has to see them. So it's not like you use them from the break zone, they're there for Terra to recur. And then you can dull him and remove six summons from your break zone to deal your opponent one point of damage. You can only do that once in this deck, obviously, because there's only nine of them. But it can be a nice little surprise that people forget about and a way for you to just kind of sneak in a win. So I've done it a few times. Now, to help supplement the rest of it, one copy of Red Mage. Giving stuff in this deck haste isn't too important. It's kind of nice just because anytime you have that backup, your opponent always has to be mindful that whatever they see on the field, you always have the potential to haste something out. So it could be more, you know, attackers than they're expecting. But again, you can use them with Seymour or Vivi if you really need to. One copy of Kuchaspel. Very important against stuff like uh, Barrett from Avalanche, which has built-in protection that he's going to shrug off all these baby pings. Kuchaspel is mandatory to be able to say, nope, got to turn that off. You're going to take all of it. Zombie, I really like this backup the more I play, simply because, again, if they have a threat, you can take the point of damage you would have taken from the attack anyway, knock that threat out. If not, you can just completely ignore that part, and he's just a cheap 2CP backup to get down. Speaking of cheap 2CP backups... Lil T and Yuke, I have never used either of their damage 5 effects. They're simply in here because they're, again, a cheap early backup for colors. Uh, I will say, I was almost going to swap them out for something else. But the other day, I had a play that made me keep them in there, and that was the fact that I was able to, after I had a full 5 backup line, I don't remember who it was, but I know I had X Death in hand. I didn't get X Death down. So I just bounced the Lil T back to my hand for free, and then just put X Death down, which was a very nice tempo play for me, so I just appreciated being able to clear up my backup line a little bit. This Lil T, the only card it will search for in here is Black Waltz 1, because of course there are no uh, wind cards, but just ice, so it's just a way to help get you a Black Waltz. And that can be important because the thing with all these Black Waltzes, other than BB, they don't actually have any entry effects. And they require you to have another one in hand to be a threat. If you just put a Black Waltz 3 out there and you have nothing in hand, your opponent has nothing to be afraid of. So I really value these cards that help you either get to them in your deck or pull them back from the break zone. Because again, I've had, these, I've had a few games where I'll find just a single Black Waltz without any of the others. And again, what's, there's no threat. They know I have to have a Black Mage in hand to make it a threat. Finally... Two generic cards help. Alba, good haster, again, can get that surprise win. And there's not a lot of break zone hate in the game, so it can be really nice to take out important cards that your opponent's expecting to rely on. And Roche as well. Again, just if you see him early, you can drop him down completely for free. And at least this way you've got a little more hasty threats that, with your clean removal of the waltzes, is very easy to push through. So, here's my Fire Lightning version. I felt really good with this one. I really like where it's at testing. Overall, again, you could maybe put in another Gesho, swap a few of the numbers around, but for the most part, I feel very confident with this. You could throw in something like Opus 6 Ramu to like dull something out of the way, give one of the Lightning Forbes haste, or zap another one for seven, and then combo off of that with, you know, you zap one for seven, dull another one, and he breaks one, and then what he discards finishes off the one that you zap for seven. They're very versatile. Again, there's, you could basically use any form of ping damage that will help you push through the stuff. So, yeah, they're, they're kind of simple in the sense that, again, they, they always do the same thing. They want to just have the waltzes in hand to keep removing your opponents forward. So, yeah, that's I uh, really like this version. Hope you give it a shot and let me know which versions you like and enjoy. I will have a deck list in the description below. And until then, take care. And here we are. I mentioned that Earth Black Mage list, so I thought I'd go ahead and put this out here too. I, I call this one Tricolor because again, this is more Earth, Lightning, Fire. Everything that was in the Earth and Lightning or Fire and Lightning list is here on the left side, and then on the right side they're not sleeved up. But this is all the new additions. Uh, these three cards are stand-ins for Robel Akbel because I couldn't find where my copies were at the moment, so I had to use proxies. But Robel Akbel is also a Job Black Mage, so he can be discarded for any of their effects. 
to do his thing as well. Now, there's not a lot of crystal generation in here. It's just these three ninja backups, so sometimes you can't really count on being able to play him for his crystal break. Sometimes you can, but there are also it's also nice because he can recycle backups. He can pull you back Palum, which means you'll always have fuel from one of the Black Mage effects. Now, how does this list compare to the other one? Well, it's hard to say. There's some things I like better about it, some things I think maybe are a little less consistent. Uh, with with the Black Mages that are not the Waltzes, the VV, Robel, Akbel, Pelham, there are sometimes I prefer them. So, for example, if I'm just trying to break a 3 CP forward, and I want to use Black Waltz 3's ability, and then sometimes that burn that I would get that 4K from these two kind of goes to waste. So it's nice to be able to pitch those other ones because I'm not wasting that 4K ping. And again, something like Robel can just be recur, can recur something like Pelham. However... Sometimes I feel, you know, if I'm trying to do ping damage, I don't have these ones to throw as much because I have these other ones, and so on occasion I miss that. But, you know, backups over here, just stuff to help you color fix since we're in three colors. Tyro is great because he can get out whatever forwards you want. Uh, Star Sybil can grab Robel himself as well as Gesho, which is quite nice. And Star Sybil can also grab two copies of Shantoto, which I totally forgot to put out there with the original list. Uh, which is quite nice. You know, Mr. Dragon's just generically good to summon. Kusith goes into that recursion theme, helps us get back some of the Black Waltzes, or Black Mages. Cactar's kind of nice in here because you basically get to choose what you want to do with it. If you want to take a point of damage or you don't care, you can just cast it normally as a clean break. Here you're going to have enough colors to spend. You can override the cost so that you, you won't have to damage yourself, which is very good. Puma, a way to get stuff back. Arden is pretty much there just for color fixing purposes. You could easily swap that out for something else. Oh, one card that I actually do quite like in here, and I might even bump it up to two copies, is Aerith. And that's simply because making all of these cards out of Amaterasu range is very good. So I don't know if you knew this, but this action ability is actually one of our first, or I think it might be our very first action auto hybrid. It starts as an action ability, and then it creates an auto ability. So, the action ability is you pay nothing, you discard a Black Mage from hand. And then, it creates an auto ability that says when you do so, choose a forward, do it, you know, whichever one's effect it is. So, that can be Amaterasu, which feels quite bad, because you've already spent the card from hand as well. Aerith, making them 9k so that the Amaterasu isn't going to kill them, feels very good. So, I wasn't really sure about it when I just first put her in there, but in testing, I really appreciate that she keeps these cards alive. Same with a Gesho, you know, keeping, keeping something out of Amaterasu range is very important these days. I don't know how relevant her re-raise stuff will be, it just depends if she's going to come back or not. But anyway, this is the Earth version. I do like this version a lot too. Again, it's fun using Robel, it's fun kind of using the generically good Earth stuff. You have Shantoto, if someone goes aggressive against you, you can board wipe. You've got Miss Dragon to stop them if they've got a lot of recursion. Really good in a mirror match because they'll want to bring back their Black Mages. Which version you like better is ultimately up to you. I will put the deck list in the description below for this one as well, but I just wanted to show off both. And again, I know there's like a lightning water version. I think that's what's pretty neat about these cards is that they seem to be very versatile and that you can build them and take them in very many different ways. So anyway, if you try both these, let me know which one is your favorite. Really appreciate you watching. And hey, I will see you in the next one. Bye.